So some of this is going to be a little bit of overlap, but I'll, I'll still go through it to confirm that we're, we're thinking about learning plan. Um, and, I'll, and I'll just couch this first as uh, we went to some of the advisors here at the University of Washington and said, yeah, we're going to work on a, a learning plan for students. And uh, they said learning plan. That, uh, you know, it, it took me back to uh, myself being in college and hearing about cognitive learning and knowing when you're learning and, and uh, what your higher level objectives are. And we realized what we're trying to do is much more along the lines of logistical planning, uh, not this reflective, I really want to get, you know, higher critical thinking skills out of my, you know, I want to be able to debate better or something like that at the end of my, my academic career. So the phrase learning plan, at least for the University of Washington, has been put on the shelf and allowed to, the, the advisors are going to own that phrase. So we'll talk about either a course plan or an academic plan, because um, that phrase is really important to them. Um, so whenever you think about software, try to keep in mind the impact we're trying to have on the students. And what you see on this first slide are a couple of personas that were developed out of uh, research of the students here at the University of Washington. We've got Susie, who's a sophomore, and she's really excited about being able to outline her plan. She's one of those gung-ho planners. She's on a mission to be a, um, a pharmacy student after her undergraduate degree, so she really wants to get out of here on time and with appropriate courses so that she can, she can um, be ready for that major. And then Frank is kind of the, my parents told me to do this, kind of guy. I, I really don't think I want to go into business, even though my parents are telling me to do that. Um, and so he's kind of treading water for the, the first year, essentially, and he's in that scenario. But um, still, he's got to find courses and put together that next quarter to at least survive. And because my plan exists, and this is obviously hypothetical, but because my plan exists, he's able to find the courses and, and manage his plan more easily. So that's our goal to really allow students to get rid of the headache of searching the course catalog and just basing some of their decisions on impromptu conversations with friends and, oh, why not? I think I'll take that, but that they're actually able to explore the information that we do have. Um, you know, I think some of the most exciting conversations get started around my plan as far as what we aren't doing year one. You know, we've got a really practical scope for this year one uh, effort. And I'll talk more specifically about that. Um, but first, we'll just kind of projecting out to year two or beyond, uh, and maybe emphasize the beyond. Um, some of the things that were highlighted here was enhanced advisor and collaboration functions, um, something along the lines of, of social media. We're certainly going to be taking on basic commenting, but you know, perhaps there's even further uh, ways that we could go with that. When we get to section planning and registration, any of the interactions between what we are doing and then what might be happening with enrollment, as far as actually doing a schedule builder or feeding a registration cart, those kinds of interactions are exciting, but they're definitely not in year one scope. And honestly, that second item of, of the really specific section planning and, ske and schedule building is likely not year two. Uh, enhanced progress tracking and alerts, we're really going to look to ways to um, to handle email notifications for some of the most critical information in year one, uh, but there's been requests for that uh, to be expanded. And then administrative processes related to academic plan, and not just the administrative processes, whether you're, uh, we're getting into, well actually, but I think there's also quite a bit of reporting that could be really compelling and interesting as we see, you know, what are students most interested in, uh, the Naval Postgraduate School conducts uh, their curriculum planning completely on demand-based curriculum planning. Uh, so they allow the students to indicate what they're interested in, and they then form their curriculum around that. Um, yeah. That might be one extreme, but it, it seems like there's some gray area in there where this kind of data could allow departments or the university as a whole to be a little bit more responsive to interest and, and seeing what those patterns may be. Jill, can I ask a question? Um, Jill, can I ask a question? Sure. That uh, administrative part we're looking there, would that also where we might see functionality about that concept of, say, advisor-approved learning plans versus 
unapproved conceptualizations? Yeah, I, th I think conceptually that would be there. We we haven't seen um, Debbie Wiegand uh, is sitting next to me. She's with undergraduate academic affairs, and uh, she had mentioned that there here at the university there is a uh, one department where they require their students to create a plan, um, and then graduate students need to create a plan, and, and then that would be approved and reviewed. As a whole, the majority of the university doesn't require that sort of workflow, uh, but I could see that that might be a bigger priority for other universities. And I Great, think it will come along. It will come along, yeah. Cool. Yeah. Great. Any other questions there? <laughs> uh, and then, then this slide really just kind of touches on what, what uh, Carol introduced really well is as we look at managing curriculum to enrollment to advise that my plan spans a, a couple of those, but really, um, you know, I'm not sure exactly how with managed curriculum and, and advise, but th this is really heavy facing the, the, the student and, and getting into that enrollment piece. Um, Carol, is there anything else, anything you want to add to that? I mean, I don't think I have as, as strong of a, a command right. of where my plan fits in a larger scheme. Well, um, I think I would just say that, that my plan is pretty much of an analog to what we were thinking about learning, you know, quote, unquote, learning plan. And I do like the distinction because, you know, learning, um, really we're just saying here the courses you're going to take. We're not saying you're actually going to learn anything in them. Um, but, you know, I, I, think, I think it's an analog for how on the um, quality student enrollment side, we were thinking about learning plans. Um, I do think that it goes a little bit, I mean, my understanding of my plan, and all these things are evolving, right? I mean, because this is one area where I think it's going to be so interactive with how students actually end up using the tool, because <laughs> maybe the way we envision how they're going to use it isn't, doesn't quite drive with that, and so it's, I think it's going to be constantly evolving. But I think there's um, broader components of, I think there's aspects of program exploration and um, some things in the umbrella of we may not have thought specifically were in learning plans. I think it's a little bit broader. Okay. Conceptually. But I think it's a really good I think it's a really good analog. I mean I think I think in a lot of ways you could just substitute my plan for learning plan in a lot of our requirements. And I should say that we should we should make um, make sure the audience understands that your starting point was the quality of student requirements around learning plan and academic planning. So, I mean, just to reassure the community is that that was your starting point for um, looking at what was required, you know, what, what institutions in the quality consortium had asked for in terms of academic advising and learning plan. Right? <laughs> Yeah, and, it, and it's great to hear you go over those wireframes again and go through those uh, the, the user stories because that's, we really still are in alignment. Though we've had mm -hmm. to do some negotiation as far as what's, what's realistic and feasible in right. year one that still allows us to do a broad swath of, of functionality, you know, to really hit an appropriate ecosystem of, of features mm -hmm. to be able to release year one. Um, right. We're still, I think, in alignment with the initial kind of analysis that was done by the quality group. Yep. Yep. I think it's still a really good fit. Okay. I'm going to mute. Uh, thank you, Carol. And then um, this is just kind of our, our year one primer, what we started off with. Uh, the key goal is to help students navigate. And I, I like the verb navigate. It's very practical. It's functional. So navigate the UW curriculum and achieve their academic, academic goals. Um, the scope, it's kind of fun. They would think about prospective students and parents. Um, they would be out of scope. Yet I would say that there's quite a few pieces, and I'll be showing you today find the, our find course, uh, a search course tool. And that is something that's going to be available both to students who log in with a, a UW identification, but then also for just general students. And so that could be for a broader audience. 
Um, we aren't going to be trying to have a native mobile app ready. We're hoping that the Kuali mobile effort would make this easy longer term. Um, and this idea of exploration of self, the learning profile, anything like that, there's actually existing tools like the Strong Inventory Index or, or pieces like that if you're trying to identify who am I. So we're not going to try to recreate that and do that better, but really keep it at the pra more practical level. Uh, section level planning is a high value item. I think students would really like this. And if we just think about it as I'm searching for a course and I want to look at things that uh, courses that happen after 10 a.m. or after 11 a.m. would likely be extremely popular with certain students, uh, or I've got to work on Fridays, so show me courses that, that wouldn't fall in that sort of area, but then actually to then be able to build out your schedule. Um, but again, for year one, we aren't going to be getting to those things. Um, and then finally, registration shopping cart. I think that that is something that won't, that isn't considered part of my plan scope in the short or long term, but will likely be handled by a broader quality student effort, um, whether it's through enrollment or, or something else. So some of the in-scope pieces, uh, we're focused on undergraduate and graduate students here. Uh, we're um, looking at both how to find programs and find courses. Then when you get into the manage the plan, that's where you're adding courses to a, a calendar view and running the requisite rules on it. Um, and then finally, sharing with an advisor, and we'll be including the ability for advisors to view and then comment and really see that as a, as a student would see it. We're, we're building this in the Kuali student framework. We're using KRAD. We're kind of the first, I think, one of the first, at least, applications to use KRAD. So we're actually kind of building that framework up as we go. It's, uh, it's a good learning experience, and, and the KRAD team has been amazing to work with. Um, and then this is really part of our long-term replacement strategy. Uh, and here at the UW, we're having to then make sure that we integrate um, anything that we're doing with other things that are here at the University of Washington. Um, and then finally, we're, we're focused on August of this summer for having the first year release. I think that that'll likely either be a small launch, a soft launch. Uh, the thing that we don't want to do is share this with all incoming freshmen before it's been tested and end up turning that audience off, essentially. So we're, we're going to roll this out slowly, but August uh, is what we're on track to, to deliver. Um, that's the slide I have right there. Why don't I take a, a second here? Are there questions before I go into? Um, I'm wondering if I should show you right now a demo or talk about what's in year two. Um, we'll see the demo. Okay. It's like you can you can talk about it so long, and then it's like just show us what you. <laughs> People pay more attention if they see that from. Yeah. They think working, then we'll get excited about what's in year two.